Generally speaking, compared to the overall American population, the number of people watching cable news at any one time is not a very big number. Uh, but of the people who are watching cable news at any one time, about half of them these days are usually watching Fox. Now, I'm not noting that angrily or happily from the perspective of a competitor. It's just true. And it is relevant to our country, even if you don't care about the cable news ratings race. In the rest of the world, when things said on Fox get debunked, we tend to think, oh, that's debunked. And then it ends up being a surprise to all of us that something roundly debunked by all responsible observers persists in the American consciousness. Por ejemplo, death panels. They're going to be saying, no, you can't give this person a hip replacement. They're too old. This will be done by this federal board, right. uh, which is really the death panel that Sarah Palin was talking about. Death panels. Yes, back in the news again. He warned Americans about so-called death panels. Those death panels, which created a big controversy. Death panels. Not actually in health reform. Not even close. Not true. Except on Fox, it is true. And since a lot of people watch Fox, a lot of people believe that thing that's not true is true. And so our politics are now stupid. Our politics are now partially organized around a thing that is a lie, because Fox said it a lot. We are consigned as a country to have stupid nonsense fights about something that is not in health reform, instead of fighting about what health reform actually is because of the influence of Fox and because of their dedication to that particular lie. So with that as the relevant background, here's fair warning of what a really big part of the country is being told to believe about Egypt. The radicals here in America that are operating as um, Marxists and communists that are in support of this. Their goals include the transformation of America into an Islamic state, the destruction of the Western world. There is a strange alliance between the left and the Islamicists that we're seeing. I think it's all part of the coming insurrection. You can call it a new world order or a caliphate, but the world right now is being divvied up. And the uber left and the Islamicists and the global elites are are moving in the same direction. I'm not saying they're plotting together. The Islamicist and the uber left are. And they share some commonalities. I mean, honestly, I can't tell the difference between extreme leftists and radical Islamists. I, I don't. Except I haven't seen anybody on the left take an airplane and blow up the buildings. But they're both going for a new world order and they're go both doing it through riots. That was uh, earlier this week. Here was today. A caliphate is a system of government established in Islam. It's governed by Islamic law, otherwise known as Sharia law. All Islamic governments would unify under this caliphate, one new world order. We already have it happening in some parts. We have Islamic law happening in some parts around the world, including America. The left and Islamic radicals in our own country speaking together, side by side. And that's how you can understand Egypt. Can you imagine how stupid our debates are going to be about foreign policy in this country for the next few months after Fox spent the entire week of the Egypt revolution broadcasting these conspiracy theories day after day after day? Joining us now is Chris Hayes, MSNBC contributor, Washington editor of The Nation. Chris, it's great to see you. Thank you for helping me with this. <laughs> I'll do what I can. Uh, America will be forced to become an Islamic state. A new world order is coming. Uh, the Muslim Brotherhood is behind the protests in Egypt, and the American left is organizing the protests. Um, where, what, where, what is the logical conclusion to these claims? Where is this going? Well, it, well, it's going towards, I mean, what's, what's, what's interesting about what Beck does is that he takes things that are already, I mean, there's sort of paranoia about the caliphate is already out there in sort of extreme right-wing circles. That's been there for a while. Obviously, uh, you know, the idea that Marxists, undercover American Marxists particularly, are trying to subvert American democracy is a very old paranoid delusion on the right. In fact, it goes back to McCarthyism and even back to the Red Scare. And what he does is it's like, like making a smoothie out of everything in your cabinet. He just sort of throws it all into the blender <laughs> and, and clicks the button. And what comes out is a notion that there are all these others, capital O others, and all the disparate, complicated facts about the world 
are unified and ordered by the fact that all of these others are trying to screw you, the viewer. That is that is the point of every one of these things, is to, is to be suspicious and fearful and angry and resentful of the them. And that capital T them can be everyone from people getting their heads bashed in by Mubar Mubarak security services, or you know some, some random u university student in England who's trying to get their tuition uh, raises protested. Well, the problem I have with this is not that Glenn Beck, Glenn Beck does stuff that's dumb. What I'm yeah. worried about is that it has a stupefying effect on the country's ability to discuss important issues. Yes. And so the, the, the fact that all this is queued to a real news event, I'm worried, frankly, worried that the way this is going to play out over the next few months in American politics is that we're going to be essentially incapable of yes. having a real discussion about what happened in Egypt because people who watched it on Fox, watched it unfold on Fox, are going to believe that it means you should store food. That's right. I mean, A, I can't allay your worries, so I'm going to do a bad job. If, if, but I, I think that basically it's worrisome for a number of reasons. I mean, one is that this is a very complicated area of the world. Number two, we already have a pretty messy foreign policy in the Middle East, um, if, if you've been paying attention. And, you know, we need to do a better job with how we relate to that part of the world. We just do. And we need a, a democratic citizenry who's prepared to engage on some of these issues in an informed way. And that's the only way we're going to do a better job, and it's the only way we're going to have a better world and a peaceful Middle East, inshallah, someday, right? Yeah. So, so this is really a massive obstacle to making that happen. And I also think the other thing that's so worrisome is that it's very hard to understand how you undo the disinformation. Because the fact that is, you, can, you and I can talk about how it's patently ludicrous that this the caliphate is is around the corner but the people that are watching fox don't trust you and me and so it doesn't it doesn't carry much water and they probably don't trust the new york times or a million other sources that could sort of demonstrably debunk it and how you get outside of that relationship that is the really the hardest nut to crack the, the, the problem, I mean, that's, that's why they constantly preface everything they say with don't believe what anybody else tells right. you about this. I will tell you that we should just let everybody know that you saying inshallah, you saying God willing there, will be on a loop and used as a Fox <laughs> News know. bumper to show that the Muslim Brotherhood is taking over us. That was, it was tongue in cheek, and as it slipped out of my mouth, I was like, I don't know, maybe that one. <laughs> no, it's over, man. It's, it's over. You are now ra I Chris Hayes, the radical imam. God bless you. Chris Hayes, radical imam, MSNBC contributor, Washington editor of The Nation, and new star of Fox and Friends. Thank you, Chris. Shokran, Rachel. <laughs> the one thing I